This is the last video in this series in which I was attempting to repair this NCR machine. It initially didn't uh, boot from floppy disk and I had uh, two hard disk controller boards to repair. And uh, managed to get the main board working, got the floppy disk uh, interface working so it will now boot from floppy disk. But unfortunately I can't get the hard drive interface boards to work. So as I said I had two of these and they had a large number of failed devices. Fairly complex board based around uh, it's basically an 8x300. It's um, actually an 8x305 that's fitted to this board. Very similar device. And unfortunately this has a lot of custom ICs on it which is uh, really what's stopping me from completing the repair. So I went through the board, went through the, um, the glue logic uh, all the custom uh, devices uh, were fitted to the board and I tried um, following through what the custom devices were supposed to do by following the code through using the logic analyzer uh, but it has become clear that uh, several of those custom devices have failed so a very helpful guy sent me this uh, loan board this is a known good working board so thanks for that Fritz very useful and um, this was um, very useful because it firstly proved that the main system was up and running properly as it should be. The system will connect to the hard disk using this board. It will format the disk and it will read and write the disk. So this is working fine and so I know that the rest of the machine is working fine. But when I started comparing what the custom devices were doing, because I don't have any spec sheets for them so I don't know what they do internally, um, but when I started looking at the way they were behaving, I'd already come to certain conclusions as to which devices had failed. And sure enough, on uh, these boards, the same devices had failed on both boards. About three of the devices on both boards had failed. Possibly some more, but I can't really test them thoroughly when, you know, because they interact to a certain extent, so you can't really test them properly without other devices working. So, works to a certain extent now. I think all the um, basic logic is working but the custom devices uh, are faulty and because I don't have any replacements unfortunately I can't go any further with this repair so I haven't been able to get this working. But unfortunate so I don't li like leaving machines um, unrepaired and um, in this case that's what I'm going to have to do. So uh, this will be going back to its owner, the basic machine now is working and um, he's going to be keeping his eye open for either some replacement custom ICs or a replacement board. So if anyone has one of these boards, it's a WD1001-05. If you have one of these that you're willing to part with for a reasonable price, then please contact me. Uh, if you have any of the custom devices, then again, please um, leave me a message. Um, but I'll now reassemble this machine and um, it can go back to its owner. Someone did ask me why so many devices would have failed on both of the boards because as I say I had two of these boards and both had a large number of failed devices. So I was asked what I thought might have been the reason for so many failures. And I didn't have that many failures on the main board, it was mainly these interface boards that seemed to be causing the problem. I don't know what the history of them, uh, that these boards are, so I don't know what's happened to them in the past. But what I did find when I was initially testing this machine, because what I do is before I start connecting the boards, you've seen me do this before in the past, I go through the power supply. I'd been told by the owner the power supply had been repaired and tested, but I always go through the power supply anyway. I connect dummy loads, um, you've seen me do this before, but I connect dummy loads to the supply, run them up, uh, do various testing. And I found there was an issue with the way this machine's wired up. I also noticed that the ground straps running between the drives, the chassis and the main boards were missing on both machines. And they're quite important. It's not just for shielding or anything like that. They're important in case you get an issue with the grounding of the um, 0 volt return wires. Because if they go up in circuit or if they're intermittent or you've got poor contacts, you can end up putting the high voltage rail through into the 5 volt rail 
And I just want to quickly demonstrate that with a, a kind of a mock-up as to the way a generalized system like this works. And I'll show you what the problem uh, can be. So what I've got set up here is a very simple test circuit and it's kind of representative of a general layout you'd have in a vintage computer or similar system. So in this case we just have two rails. We've got our 5 volt rail that we're currently connected to. So this uh, red lead goes back to the positive input of our uh, multimeter. Everything is referenced to ground at the uh, power supply and I've got the two channels of the power supply, the 0 volts are strapped directly together at the supply and um, the red lead is coming from the supply, that's the one over on this side, has uh, 12 volts and the green is 5 volts. You can see that we're getting our 5 volt rail and if we switch over to the 12 volts to block the uh, meter, we're getting our 12 volt rail. So we'll leave this connected to our 5 volt rail. The diode in the middle is, uh, again, it's representative of the type of um, intermediate circuits you get on a complex system. So it'd be ICs or um, driver transistors, all manner of um, circuits sit between the 5 volt system and the higher voltage system. So for example core memory that can uh, have hundreds of driver transistors. But normally there's a, a connection between the two. The 5 volt system is normally controlling something on the 12 volt system. And so for example with floppy drives or hard disk drives the 5 volt system is controlling stepper motors, solenoids, that sort of thing. And it all works fine until you have an issue with the ground returns. So this blue lead and this black lead both go directly to ground at the power supply. We've got the ground return for our 5 volt, the ground return for our 12 volts, and everything's fine. You saw we had 12 volts, we've got our 5 volts. But what happens if we lose the ground return on our 12 volt system? So if I just disconnect this, this is the ground return. Notice that the voltage on the 5 volt rail has gone up to nearly 11 volts. If I reconnect this, and you also saw the LED get brighter, if I reconnect this, you'll see it will return to normal. And this is the kind of problem you can get if you lose um, proper grounding on the split supply systems, especially when the same power supply is being used to supply the two um, separate voltages. The diodes on the input represent the uh, effectively the output characteristics of the switching supplies that are typical for this type of system in that the output normally has a steering diode or, or a pass transistor that operates in a very similar manner to this and in fact a lot of the early uh, more expensive systems had fairly uh, beefy crowbar protection on the output of the supply. That was both to protect the system in case the supply itself failed but it was also to stop uh, voltage in excess of the required voltage being backfed into its output. In other words, it would protect the 5 volt rail if there was something uh, untoward externally. But as you can see, just disconnecting the ground can make a big difference even though the inputs are still essentially what they should be. We're getting a, a huge voltage going through our 5 volt system. So as you can see, if you get problems with the ground returns, you can end up frying your board. So it's always best to make sure that all the ground returns are in place. That's why I have these uh, ground wires connected. There's one connected to the main board. There's one here clipped onto the hard disk. There's another one, you probably can't see it, but there's one clipped here onto the floppy drive. And these all go back to the common ground return. And I do that in case there is a, an issue with the ground return. But I found that because of this particular arrangement here, you've got this connector that comes through, feeds power 5 volts and 12 volts to the drives that are connected, and then you get the 5 volt signals going through the ribbon cable to the controller board. But if you lose the, um, one of the 0 volt return lines, you can end up putting 12 volts through the devices on the hard disk and they can make it that voltage can make its way onto the 5 volt rail or some of the lines coming out of the controller board and that's possibly what happened 
I did see that when I was testing it. I saw that the uh, voltage on the 5 volt rail was spiking if I move these connectors around. And it's this connector here. It's um, got some uh, dodgy contacts. I have tightened them, um, but even so, it's always best to have the uh, ground straps fitted. And I believe that's probably what caused um, the bulk of the failures and why there are so many failures on the uh, main board. You saw what happened in the demonstration and I think something similar happened here. In fact I posted um, a video series several years ago on a, a DEC PDP-8M. So that's DEC. Sorry just poking a bit of fun there. Um, but the PDP had a similar issue where the ground return wires were loose and that fried, that put the 16 volts that's supposed to feed the core memory, it put that through to the 5 volt and it was only because several devices on the 5 volt rail went dead short and overcurrented the power supply and it shut down that it um, preserved the rest of the devices. But that was what caused that problem and it's fairly common. So. It's always best to make sure that all the grounds are in place, check all the wiring, make sure it's uh, secure, otherwise you can end up frying boards unnecessarily. So uh, as I say, unfortunately, that's it for this particular repair. If anything uh, comes of this or if this ever gets repaired, uh, then I will of course uh, provide an update, but um, that's it for this series. So that's the machine reassembled, ready to go back to its owner. Pity we couldn't get it um, fully working but hopefully at some point some replacement parts will turn up.